Om Shanti. I'm very happy that today is a special day when people in Bharat specially celebrate the festival of Makar Sakranti. On this day, homemade candies made of jaggery and sesame seeds are prepared and enjoyed. Kite flying is also one of the activities enjoyed in this festival. It is a festival of joy. In Gujarat, there's so much that happens on this day. Thank you for remembering me on this auspicious day. You all listen to Baba's special 18th January Murli, which is about crowning. And in this Murli of 18th January 2010, Baba has remembered and praised Brahma Baba and Mama for their Purusharth. In this confluence age, Brahma Baba and Mama give us this beautiful teaching to we children to become like them. Now talking about Baba's Avyakta Murli that you picked for today, 18th January is the day of love and affection. Baba children on this day wake up even before Amrit Vela. In Madhuban, souls start reaching to Baba's room from 2 a.m. to have loving conversations with Baba. Some children kindly approach Baba, Brahma Baba, and say, Baba, you left for the subtle region before we came to this knowledge. Baba also responds to their conversation with love and affection. This Morli is about Baba handing over responsibility to Dadi Prakashmani and Didi Manmohini. You all know Brahma Baba left his body all of a sudden on 18th January 1969. On 21st January, when funeral happened, Dadi Guljar sat to offer bhog to Baba. Shu Baba and Brahma Baba came to Dadi's chariot and officially handed over Yegya's leadership to Dadi Prakashmani and Didi Manmohini. So in this Murli, Baba is reminding children that now the task of world service goes to instrument children and Brahma Baba along with Shu Baba will remain the supreme doer and help children perform the world service. Baba is now the backbone of Yagya and children are the instruments. It is also the responsibility of children that they put effort to become angel, just like Brahma Baba. In this Murli, Baba has underlined a point that some children, they are very much sincere about Amrit Vela. They charge themselves up with Baba's power and blessings. But when it comes to practical karma, they lag behind. They find it hard to be at the stage of karma yogi throughout the day. Baba says there's a breakage in the connection between karma and yoga. For this, Baba has shared a lot of pra practical tips and shrimat. Just like Baba being Karavanhar, the supreme doer, gets things done by children, remember yourself as doer and get things done by your body. Soul is the doer and organs are performers. This smriti will make you karma yogi. For this stage, make timetable of your mind. The essence of the whole Murli is, prepare a timetable of your mind every day. You all have timetable to be performed by body throughout the day. You plan accordingly. From morning to night, we set up our to-do list. Just like this, Baba says, make the timetable for your mind. Baba also shared a useful technique that you practice Soman according to the action you perform. 
mothers while preparing food can take soman. We listen to Murli classes and a lot many activities that we are involved in. So Baba says, remember soman, self-respect according to your day-to-day -day actions. Let me tell you what types of soman you can remember. For example, early morning, when we wake up, we say, Baba, I am your adorable, lovely child. This is also a soman that I'm God's child. When we do conversations with Baba becoming a child, we gain beautiful experiences. We, when we listen to Murli, we remember this soman that Baba, I'm a godly student. You come all the way from Paramdham, such a far place to teach me. Just like this, when we perform actions in daytime, we remember ourselves as Ruhani warriors. We deal with a lot of situations where we have to become Ruhani warriors, karma yogi, and win over the situations. If mind is focused on a swaman, self-respect, while performing task, the stage becomes man manabhav. Initially, Didi Manmohini taught us, taught us the same thing. Remember to remind yourself as karma yogi, take somans like I'm a victorious soul, I'm free from obstacles. You can take a lot many powerful somans and your stage becomes powerful. If mind is engaged and you're busy churning soman and murli points, distraction of mind ends. In this murli, Baba has given direction to become karma yogi, being an instrument and perform actions, it needs practice. Also, Baba shares the experience of the day when Brahma Baba left his body and became avyakt. Baba left his body all of sudden. Brahma Baba left his body all of sudden. No one had thought Baba would go like that. But Baba has underlined a few things around it. Children had noticed that for last few years before Brahma Baba left body, Brahma Baba did this intense practice of becoming bodiless, an incorporeal stage. Baba paid full attention to all four subjects and to obtain number one, Baba's focus was to finish all karmic accounts and put efforts to become Nashtamoha, that is detached from children and family. Baba held hand of Dadi Prakashmani while leaving body and there was nothing that pulled Baba. Because Brahma Baba had this practice of detachment for a long time. Shu Baba says, you children also follow father in this. Fulfill your responsibilities, do all that is needed, but become detached. Brahma Baba also fulfilled his duty till the end. He didn't keep anything pending. Even on his last day, Baba taught Murli, Baba spoke Murli, gave night class before saying goodbye to children. Baba also remembered Mama and briefed her specialty that Mama never said, I will do, it will be done. Mama always believed that end time would come any time, now or never. Whatever is to be done has to be done now. Some children keep thinking, when will the final destruction happen? What will happen in the end? Baba says, instead of thinking when destruction happens, focus on making your stage avyakta because dates are uncertain. Anything could happen to your body anytime. 
instead of thinking about the date of destruction, focus on your own date of becoming an angel. Things will happen all of a sudden. In this pandemic time, a lot of people left body. Young people are leaving bodies. So Baba makes us aware that instead of thinking about the end of the cycle, think of the end of your life and prepare accordingly. Be ever ready and long time practice. Baba has made us aware of this. Follow Mama in this. Mama has this slogan, till the end of her life, every moment is the last moment. Soul can leave this body any time. So Mama was detached and her stage was beyond corporeal. Mama was ever ready. Even on her last day, Mama served grapes to children. She left body after fulfilling her responsibility. So Baba says, follow the footsteps of Mama because time is uncertain. Be soul conscious instead of date conscious. One more thing Baba reminded that initially when Shu Baba was about to begin his role, taking Brahma Baba's body in 1936, couple of years before that, Brahma Baba had started making himself prepared for his extraordinary journey. Baba had maintained a diary in 1932. Lakshudadi had given me that diary and I had even typed out Baba's words. Brahma Baba had started practicing to rule over his mind and intellect. Baba has specially mentioned this point in Murli as well about how Brahma Baba held court with his mind, intellect, and sanskars and became a victorious ruler. It was his efforts that made him victorious. Baba says, you children also should practice the same. Soul is the king and be in the consciousness of being a king and ask your mind and intellect, where do they wander? Why do they find it difficult in being in the remembrance of Baba? What is that in my mind? What is that that my mind demands? Talk to each of your sense organs. Be the king of your kingdom and have full control over your sense organs. Baba says, children, check yourself every day. You should be able to be in the state that you want. You should be in charge of yourself. Don't let your mind rule over you. Baba emphasized that you are, are you able to strike the balance between what you think and what you do? Keep checking yourself subtly. Baba has given a soman that children, you are the master almighty authority. Master almighty authority is the one who sends organs to what they are ordered to do. You are master almighty authority. Use all your powers in your benefit. For this, there's a technique that the more you are seated in the seat of your original true self, you become powerful ruler over your sense organs. Whenever you need a power, you'll be able to involve that power. Whenever you need a power, you'll be able to invoke that power. You need different powers in different circumstances. Power to tolerance, power to pack up, Order a power and you should be able to use it properly. Many times, children realize that they didn't use the power they had when it was needed to. And later, regret saying, I should have done that better. 
this is not a symptom of knowledge full soul knowledge full soul is one who even thinking before speaking or doing one who thinks even before think baba says let your mind do whatever you order it to do none of your sense organs should deceive you say yes to baba shrimat mama had one more specialty she lived by one slogan hanji that means saying yes to whatever baba says mama never mixed up her own thinking thoughts to baba shrimat she never raised a question in shrimat even if baba says it's night in the morning mama would say yes baba she never justified anything her attitude of saying yes baba made mama sampoorna an angel baba says children keep putting doubts baba says children keep putting doubts they raise doubts it happens due to lack of knowledge because children see only the present but baba knows all three aspects of time past present and future it's god who speaks this gyan not any human being but children sometimes raise question about baba's words for example when baba spoke this murli himachal himachal states chief minister visited madhuban and he was sitting in front of baba he was a helping hand of baba's yagya he did not follow gyan and other dharna but he did a lot of seva for baba and yagya so for everything he did baba praised him and his wife and said child you reached your home keep visiting madhuban you can come any time but a lot of souls questioned saying see baba says only pure souls should be allowed in madhuban but baba himself is praying someone who never listens to murli why baba is personally meeting such soul but baba knows that he has to give the fruit of bhakti to souls to deserve here baba is seeing bhavna not anything else baba gives return of bhavna in order to be free from doubts and questions we should churn knowledge as much as we can if god is meeting someone and praising him that means there's some big reason mystery behind him baba has to give the return of bhakti and children put doubts about baba's act many sindhi sisters brothers come to madhuban those who are not following fully bk lifestyle when they come they meet baba on stage they get toli and drishti from baba those who are not very pleased with this they keep creating waste thoughts they say we are following all bk rules for such a long time and we don't get such special treatment baba knows the drama of souls so he gives special attention to some children when he comes because these are the souls to become instrument to do world service even if they are not fully into shrimat their service through body mind and wealth has flourished seva and there are many centers being established by them those who have helped babas yagya with honesty baba will make them pure anyway so there's no need to raise questions we should take baba's words and acts by being trikaladarshi lots of children are trapped into questions why what who and all baba says those who are trapped into questions can never become happy and cheerful one more thing baba has said end time is here we came to knowledge quite late those who had drama of being with brahma baba 
we didn't get direct sustenance from Brahma. We got sustenance from Avyakta Bab Dada. And those who came after Dadi Gulzar left her body did not even get sustenance from Avyakta Baba. Now we are nearing to the time of too late. It doesn't happen instantly. It's a phase. Baba has said, those who didn't see Baba in corporeal get to see and meet Baba in subtle stage. Everybody has this chance to meet Baba through their avyakta stage. But it needs practice and lots of efforts. Regarding too late board, Baba says time will change all of a sudden. And at that time, you'll not get to do Purusharth. When troubles raise in extreme, souls will come to you and you'll have to give sustenance to those souls through your stage, Siddhi. At that time, you'll not get time to practice and you'll not be able to do Seva, even if you want. So Baba says, this is the time to surrender your mind, body, and wealth. Now, because in the end, you'll not be able to do anything. That is the time of too late. Baba reminds us of this in this morley. At that time, even if anyone wants to give Baba physical money and do seva, it will not make any sense. Here in Madhuban, Season had just started and thousands of souls were ready to come to Baba's home. But due to pandemic, everything changed. So this is a sign of how situations in the end could be. Time is showing its symptoms. Souls coming to Madhuban are restricted and we are able to invite very less number of souls. What I mean to say is, Whatever time we have in our ha hand, Baba says, surrender your time, money, and wealth, and everything. Because drama is showing this big game of achana all of a sudden. Many souls are living body. We have to pay attention to each thought because world transformation will happen only through the power of thoughts. Sankalp Shakti, power of thoughts is everything there's no need to there's no need to wander your mind and waste thoughts and meaningless thoughts be man mana bhava and practice to put break in your thoughts in a second i think you all are doing so much tapasya in this auspicious month and you are trying to fulfill expectations of baba Practice of being with Baba in one second, experiencing that lovely stage in one second, because love is something that can change anything. It's a power. True love with Baba ends mind distractions. Experiencing the stage free from body consciousness is the biggest purusharth. Put an end to all forms of body consciousness. We have natural habit of being body conscious. Now soul consciousness should be the natural stage. Whenever you get time, even for a second, put a break to thoughts and experience that soul stage. I am a soul separate from this body. This body, while performing any action, keep yourself out of this consciousness and focus on your forehead where soul resides. I am a soul residing in this cave. I'm doing actions, but I'm separate from this body. The more we do this practice, we come closer to karmatit stage. Brahma Baba is waiting for us in subtle region for a long time. Baba wants children to become like him soon and be with him in subtle region so that we all together can go to our home Paramdham. When the gate of Paramdham opens, 
all souls will achieve mukti and jivan mukti. Baba says, my children are liberated even being in this life. In Satyug, life will be easier. There's no bondage. But here, being in bondage, we practice life in liberation. We have to experience jivan mukti here in Sangam Yuga, confluence age. Baba wants us to see in this stage, we all are Baba's loving, helpful children. In today's Murli, Baba said, this body is Ravan's property. We have to give him his property back. Give back Ravan's property and become light. This is what we have to do. And our Purusharth is the return of Baba's love and sustenance. Brahma Baba is giving sustenance to children from Avyakta Vatan. Baba wants us to be free from evil sanskar and experience angelic stage as much as we can. Wake up early, sit for Amrit Vela meditation, and it feels like Baba is showering blessings and I'm the canopy and, and I'm in the canopy of Baba's blessings. You all children from foreign land, I thought it's a San Francisco class, but you have gathered from many parts of America and I'm happy to be with you all today. Om Shanti Bhai Ji, when I was listening to you, I was noticing you didn't have any written notes. You were not taking, you were not looking at screen, nothing but he revised all the murli so accurately and so beautifully. I have hardly 10 questions and I have them returned with me. So I was looking at you as an inspiration. Baba has asked us to prepare timetable for mine and follow accordingly. We all work both at home and outside. Even mothers are working outside. So we have, to, we have a lot to deal with in a day. So could you elaborate a bit? How do we take Swaman while being active in Lokik walks? See, we need to have Swaman in our mind all the time. But when our mind and intellect are so much occupied, we forget Swaman. For that, we need to use some techniques like Baba's songs that you like the most. Baba's beautiful loving songs could be played in low volume while cooking or doing any other works. It helps. Reminding yourself Soman repeatedly could be a little more. So songs are one of the best practices. For yoga, I suggest you five strong Somans, like I'm a star shining in the forehead, and I go and be seated in Baba's forehead. This is for yoga. I'm Baba's jewel. I'm Baba's loving child. Another is I dwell in Baba's heart. I'm Shiv Shakti combined with Baba. I'm Baba's right hand. I shine Baba's name through my words and actions. Take these somans and practice this. But sometime, if you can't remember this somans, you can put any slogan card in front of you while working, play some commentary whenever you are free, do things that make you happy. Our life is easy yogi life, not boring. So you'll have to find techniques accordingly. So if you keep practicing this somans, then your stage will start becoming powerful and powerful and you'll come closer to Baba. And you'll start having that, that intoxication. Very nice. I love this idea of playing Baba's song. There's a question uh, regarding the same. Uh, we all have unlimited love for Baba, but sometimes we cannot do as per we want. 
how do we put ourselves in that discipline that we have love for Baba and at the same time, we are making that city or we are bringing that required transformation within us. We would, need, we would love to hear you, uh, hear your words about this. See, this is all about uh, perseverance. There are a lot of souls who are incognito and are doing amazing Purusharth. Where there is perseverance, there's fast Purusharth. Baba has given us such a beautiful life and we have to understand the importance of this. We listen to Baba every day, but we forget. Why? Because instead of seeing ourselves, we start seeing others. At present times, we see others a lot and give excuses. We say that soul is also doing like that, this and that. For some moodly points, we even say, this point is for that soul, for that person. We have this habit of seeing and pointing fingers towards others. This is not how fast Purusharth is done. We have to focus on ourselves and put an end to laziness. Take moodly points as they're told by Baba, just for you, not to others. Some souls get disheartened pretty quickly. If something happens and they make any mistake, they get disheartened. Baba says, you don't have to get disheartened. Revise morally and move on with courage. Make daily affirmations and pay extra attention if something happens. Forget what happened yesterday and move on. So revise morally points, revise morally points multiple times a day, and then you'll be able to achieve that required, expected transformation within you. Thank you, Bhaiji. I love this point that uh, we need to check our level of perseverance along with our love for Baba. Uh, next question is, how do we maintain perseverance? We expect, sometimes we expect results quickly. Means today we are doing a lot of Purushar and we expect the results tomorrow. So how do we handle expectations or how do we move ahead with this? How to maintain perseverance and how to uh, how to not get disheartened. What happens is we do a lot of efforts. We put a lot of efforts for the shard, but sometimes we lack that authenticity or the techniques are not correct. Where there is correct technique, there's success. So check your vidhi or techniques if you think you are not experiencing success in Purushar, either check yourself or get it checked. Some children ask Baba questions and expect Baba to answer them in the way that they want, in the language they want. Baba says, this is not the correct technique. I have a different language than yours. I understand the language of feelings, not English, Hindi, Punjabi and all. If you put your words in front of Baba with so much love and feelings, Baba will respond to your conversation in any possible way. So check your technique instead of being disheartened. Baba says, success is your birthright. So you are anyway becoming successful. So there's no question to get disheartened. When Things don't go as you expected. Don't get disheartened.
Thank you, Paiji. Baba today said, check your chart before you sleep. Um, and uh, one more question is there. How do we conduct coat of sense organs? Just like Brahma Baba did. How do we do that while checking our chart? And how do we uh, conduct coat of sense organs? Before Shiv Baba's part with Brahma Baba, Brahma Baba used to go to gurus and did a lot of bhakti. And those gurus suggested him to do worships, prayers, chant beads. Brahma Baba was renowned diamond merchant and he had a lot to do throughout the day. He had many responsibilities. So his mind would wander a lot. That was obvious. Baba said that he would slap himself, pinch out and said, Oh my mind, why are you so unstable? Why do you wonder? You are my friend, my helper, my support. Baba talked to his mind. Even before starting his spiritual journey with Shu Baba, Brahma Baba, he would talk to himself a lot talk to his mind and intellect. This is what we call conducting code. If your eyes are agile, if a mind wanders a lot, sit back and talk to them. Ask questions. Talking to each sense organ is conducting code. When a king holds meeting with his ministers, helpers, he asks, is everything going right with them? And what are the challenges? Just like this, you need to talk to yourself and see why mind is wandering, why your mind is distracted. God has given me everything. And if, I, if my mind still wanders, we should take it seriously. What are the things that mind is still looking for. Treat your, treat your mind like a child. Why it is not taking my orders seriously? We need to keep talking to our mind and then mind starts to come under control. Thank you so much, Paiji. One more question from Murli. Uh, when Baba came in Madhuban, uh, parties, sevadharis from different states, they come. Baba talks to parties separately. And uh, we often think that uh, these are the points Baba said to them, not to us. So how could we relate to those points that Baba told specifically to uh, parties and not to all? In this Murli, Baba spoke to doctors who came to visit Baba in Madhuban. He said, you are double doctor. You can do a lot of seva. But if you're not in medical profession, you can take his words like this. Any profession that you are into, you take Baba's words like, I need to become double professional. For example, I'm an engineer. 
then I need to become double engineer. Means to say, I can do double seva despite any profession I have. So the essence is, Baba wants children to be a part of world service. Baba praises parties in a couple of sentences and the rest Baba talks to all the children. Baba's teaching is for all, despite any party or group. Everything Baba speaks is for all. So we type out Baba's words and put it in Murli. Otherwise, we would have just sent to those limited souls. Another question is, uh, Brahma Baba in any situation became stable. He never lost his calm. Is it that Brahma Baba achieved this stage by his Purusharth or drama was already set for him that his personality and nature was like that? Is it Brahma Baba's Purusharth effort or the drama? Drama is secondary, but the first thing that is pretty important is Brahma Baba achieved that state through his Purusharth. Brahma had Brahma Baba had this unbreakable faith in Shiva Baba and drama. He had 100% faith that success is certain and God is with me. The main test paper Baba had to face was beggary part. 350 children and nothing to eat. There were financial obstacles. Brahma Baba being the leader had to take the responsibility. Brahma Baba had nurtured children with so much royalty when in Sindh, Hyderabad. People would say that the Lekras feeds dry fruits to its children. But in Abu, there were a lot of test papers, lack of food. Many children fell sick due to many reasons. Shiv Baba helped in different ways, but Brahma Baba had a lot to deal with. If you see this situation in a general perspective, Anyone could freak out because the situation was so stressful. If a person has five kids and nothing to, to feed them, it's obvious that the person gets frustrated. Since it's Shubaba's Yagya and Baba doesn't allow to beg in front of others, Brahma Baba had full faith that the Yagya is Shubaba's, Shubaba's and not him. And these children have surrendered their lives to Shiva Baba, not me. This faith got him worry free. He never freaked out, even in thoughts. Brahma Baba was worryless that Shiva Baba will feed his children. The only technique to follow was to have unlimited yoga, faith with Baba. For any obstacle, Brahma Baba got all the children sit in yoga and soon somebody would come to offer financial seva. There was not a single day that children had to sleep empty stomach. Brahma Baba just did one thing. He followed the right technique. One day, Brahma Baba said, tomorrow, we'll, uh, tomorrow we will offer jalebi bhog to Baba. Jalebi is a popular sweet funnel cake like desert. One mother who looked after Bandara came to Baba and said, Baba, we have nothing, no sugar, no flour. How could we make jalebi and offer bhog to Baba? Brahma Baba suddenly said, Child, I did not say this. Shiva Baba said this. Shiva Baba has said, that means he will get it done. And all we do is wake up at 2 a.m. and sit for yoga. Next day, Baba and all children sat for meditation at 2 a.m. early morning. In front of Baba's home was a Sindhi couple. The mother had feelings for Baba. She, was, she had so much bhavna, but her husband was totally against Baba and Yeke. 
In the midnight, he woke up and said to his wife, See, your Baba has made innocent children wake up at 2 a.m. even in the festival, festival time. And uh, he is asking me, bring whatever you have. Check what all we have in the kitchen and go and give them. The mother said, it's midnight. I cannot go now. But that man, the person insisted, no, you go and give them everything we have in the kitchen. My mind, my mind might change in the morning. So just go and give. Then that mother went to Dadi's and gave flour, sugar and stuff. In the morning, Jalebi was made and was offered to Baba. Means to say, Brahma Baba had the right approach to do things and Shiva Baba was always there to help. Drama had scenes fixed, but Brahma Baba also left no stone unturned to do Purusharth and become an example. Thank you, Bhaiji. It's very nice to listen to Baba's life. It gives us courage to become like him. There's one question. Confluence age is of 100 years. And if we do calculation, there's 15 years left. But why Shubaba says date of destruction is fixed? But why Baba says date of destruction is not fixed? One more question attached to this. What is the timeline of late and too late? See, uh, there's something to keep in mind. Why Baba says date of destruction is not fixed. Baba knows everything. He is Jani Jananhar. But if Baba announces the date, would we children be able to digest it? Children will become date conscious instead of soul conscious. So Baba doesn't mention any date. Destruction is near. There have been preparations, but Baba doesn't announce. Initially, Baba showed children vision of destruction. And now at this time, we are seeing the game of nature and a lot of happenings. Destruction doesn't take time. It could happen within seconds. Baba says, children, I will not announce date, but transformation will happen. Just keep in mind to prepare yourself to become pass with honor. Do not see calendar and say 15 years left or whatever. You focus on preparing yourself to achieve angelic stage. Revelation has to happen. It hasn't happened yet. In subtle region, advanced party is preparing for it. That the Janki, that the Prakashmani, that the Gulsar, look at them. They're so active even after leaving corporeal bodies. They're with Baba and working on this mission. So we children have to focus on Purusharth instead of anything else. When all the souls around the world will believe God has come, then revelation will happen. So it's late, but bored of too late hasn't been announced. Thank you, Bhaiji. You briefed it pretty clearly. One more question. We have uh, souls around us who are not at all ready to accept this knowledge. Baba has said, we should not leave anyone. We have to give Baba's message to all so that in the end, they would not have complained that we didn't tell them that God has come. So how do we deal with it? We have to do our part. At least we need to share brochure or basic message of Baba, even if they accept or not. Then time will come when they start absorbing your sthiti and uh, that would open their eyes. Our dharna will impress them, not words. Even if they don't accept from outside, but the transformation in us will be an example for them. Don't think much about it, but do your part and give them Baba's message at least once. We should not give them chance to complain in the end that God had come 
and you didn't inform us. One last question, how do we uh, become, how do we should, um, how do we show affection and love to our near ones while becoming nashtamoha or detached? Doesn't it look like we are forcefully showing up? Baba has told us that the only way to keep the balance is to be free from body consciousness. More we practice soul consciousness and we think these souls, family, relatives are also souls and they are Baba's children. And uh, I'm just an instrument and I'm playing a uh, part with them. There should not be attachment. Attachment creates bondage. We need to be free from bondages. We shouldn't neglect them, but take care of them, being in, in soul consciousness stage. Detachment doesn't mean neglecting. Affection should be real, not artificial. If somebody falls sick, take care of them with full heart and dedication. I want to share an instance. Recently, I had a Lokik uncle here in Madhuban who was ill, was not well, and uh, he was uh, in full bed rest. And everything had to be uh, taken care of by others. I suggested that we keep a helper for him uh, to take care of him. But my cousin said, no, brother, he is my uncle. I'll take care of him. He was my close relative, not him. But he took care of him with whole heart while I was busy with my seva. There was not attachment. It was a real affection that he took care of uncle and did everything required. Thank you so much, Paiji, uh, for this clarification. You answered all our questions. Thank you so much. You gave us your valuable time. Thank you again. Thank you. Om Shanti.
सृष्टि चक्र की Thank you. 